Hello and welcome to a brand new YouTube channel. We're like the eighth YouTube channel now, I think. Maybe ninth. We've made a few YouTube channels before. I'm just talking in general. Oh, eighth, eighth ever? Yeah. Yes, we are. The yeah. eighth YouTube channel and the only one talking about virtual reality. Exactly. New technology, this virtual reality. So that's why our channel, Treeple, is going to be covering virtual reality, some retro tech, some other sort of some more general gaming. Some other gaming stuff interspersed in there. We're going to focus on the VR stuff because that's what's really interesting and exciting to us right now. We have a Vive Pro, we have a big setup, a massive big tin shed where we can do VR. Uh, which should be seen from this video and all of our other filming. And we're going to jump straight into our first video. We are. We're going to compare something that you and I have obviously clearly done a lot of. Yes. Climbing. Any sort of exercise, really, but climbing <laughs> more. Yeah, we're looking at games where uh, you can climb up a wall. Or down a wall. Or along a wall. Or, should we stop that for Yes, now? we should stop that. <laughs> um, we're looking at the climb, uh, which is the big, uh, well, one of the big Oculus exclusives. And we're looking at to the top, which is a sort of mid-range price, £19 uh, Vive title. So I suppose the question we're going to be asking is, which one, if you want a good climbing game, which, should you buy? Which one should you buy? Let's jump into the climb first. Ooh, okay. So the climb is the serious climbing game for serious men who like I'll to climb serious ways. seriously up serious rocks and have a good time, but feel manly and feel good. Or, or womanly, because you can choose your uh, gender. Uh, and colour of your hand in the game, which is nice. Um, which sort of brings me on to the idea of the climb, which is really that it's a graphical showcase more than anything. Yeah. It's Crytek and it's uh, CryEngine. And so it looks nice. Yeah, although immediately my concern with any of these games is they look great in the environment around you. You're not really looking at the environment around you. Your hands are attached to that cliff face. You're looking at a cliff. You're basically, most climbing games like this are going to be spending 80% of the game looking at a wall. You do. Um, so they can have a great graphic fidelity behind you, but the climb especially doesn't make it easy to look at it because you, as you're climbing, you have to make sure you keep moving. Yes. Because if you stand still in the same place for too long, you get tired and fall to your death. Yeah, if you hold on with one hand, you will eventually fall. If you hold on with both, you can stay where you are. Um, but yeah, that means that you are staring at the rock texture most of the time and you're, you're just be trying to think where am I meant to go next on the higher difficulty levels to get to the better positions, which is great, but it does mean that I, I feel like in terms of like what the CryEngine could have done in VR, it's a bit of a wasted opportunity, <laughs> but it's still nice and, and the graphics make it as immersive as I think you're going to get and as in terms of climbing. Yeah, and as a climbing experience, it is what I'd imagine to be quite true to form. Uh, you spend a lot of time sort of trying to look at what you can grab hold of quickly. There are some visual indicators about which areas you can grab and which yep. you can't. Although I found sometimes areas that you could grab weren't inherently obvious and vice versa, things that you think I really should be able to hold on to that yes. weren't something you could do. Which sounds... Sometimes you have that situation where you're climbing up and you have the indicators which show you, oh, you can climb here, so you climb there. And then you think, oh, I can climb there, and you can, so you move on to that bit. And then you think, oh, maybe I can climb there, and then you can't, and then you die. And that's, that's not a very common thing, though. I think generally speaking, uh, there's enough indicators to show you where to go without feeling like you're being completely led down a path. There are multiple routes on some of the challenges, especially the harder levels that you can take different ways around a level. So there's, there's options there in terms of exactly where you go. And on the easy difficulty levels, it feels like a more relaxing experience that's more, definitely a more immersive thing just due to the graphics. Go on, Jamie, you can do it. Jamie, you did it! On the Assassin's Creed. Yay! <laughs> it's, it feels like you are climbing. And the actual motion in VR feels natural. Um, you can chalk your hands, which helps your grip, which you shake the controllers for. It's a bit gimmicky, but it works. And then... It that memory is a little wee. Yeah, it, it, does, it does feel like a Wii <laughs> control thing. It's like shake to grip. It's like, I'd rather just push a button. Um, we were playing it on Revive as well. So we were using the Vive Pro on an Oculus game. That worked incredibly well. Yeah. Um, no problems at all. Some problems in recording the footage, but the game worked great. Um, slightly annoying, of course, if you ever do that and you have a Vive and you want to play an Oculus game, in that the controls on screen are different. Yeah. And unlike, say, an Xbox and a PS4, they actually are in different places on the controller, so you have to work out where those buttons are. But actually still felt really natural uh, and a really enjoyable sort of straight-up climbing game. So that's how this is a climbing game. This is exactly what you expect in climbing. To the top kind of goes with a different approach to it. It's much more, for what lack of a better word, fun. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, it's more free in what it's trying to do, yeah. I suppose. Like there isn't, 
there isn't like the section of the to the top which is just climb a thing. Which is funny because you see it as a climbing game, it's called to the top. Yeah. Um, it's not really about scaling this cliff. In, in the climb, you start at the bottom, you go to the top. At the top, you look around this like amazing vista and you're like, yes, I did it, I'm the best at climbing. Yeah. Uh, and that's how you do it. And although there are multiple routes for getting to the top. In to the top, there are lots of different modes of the game. And you're generally trying to get through a level instead of trying to reach the top of it. Yeah, and th those levels are very simply designed. Unlike with the climb where it's got lots of really high fidelity textures, to the top is usually two different tones of color, which says a lot about what type of game it is. You need to be able to see quickly the route you're going to take into the top because where it's at its best is when you're flowing through the level and you're just feeling truly awesome as you, you do go feel, from you do feel section to section cool. jumping across. You do feel cool. The climb makes you feel cool as well in the sense that like you're a real person, you're climbing a cliff and you're doing something that you might want to do in real life. To the top makes you feel cool in the sense of you couldn't do that in real life. And yeah. like key to that is that mechanic where you're doing this and you're sort of, you're grabbing, uh, you, you're doing this, <laughs> you're doing this, and you're pushing against things in the world to fly forwards and you do fly forwards. That's what you mean by boy sex. Boy sex. Uh... <laughs> boy sex with Jamie, look at him go. <laughs> He's having sex with a really large woman. <laughs> It's like half sex, half shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> oh my god. There's no real world gravity physics no. going on here. You will, you will fly forwards. You never have to let go either. No. I think the story of the game is that you're some sort of robot that can climb, which is why your hands sort of extend out from mm. you. Um, and so you jump forwards and you propel yourself off of everything that is blue in the game. And everything that's orange, you teleport towards by clicking on it with both of the hands. So. You know, like you say, the graphics show you exactly what to do. It's very mirror's edgy in the way that it looks and the way that it sort of experiments with movement, but in VR, which is quite surprising considering it sounds like the kind of thing that would make you want to throw up. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely my concern. It's like rapid movements across the map without any sort of real life sort yeah. of comparison to it. I played Skyrim VR. <laughs> Uh, last Friday, didn't I? You and did not I, survive. No, I, I, I was sick when I finished. I was sick when I drove home for an hour. Mm. I was sick when I got home and I was sick for the rest of the evening and I had some Cocoa Pops and I felt even more sick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Scrum did not work for me at all. And that was just walking through Helgen and turning through some doors. This was jumping through the air at I, a, a, an incredible speed. Yeah. Uh, and I got out of it and I spent a 40, 45 minute time in it by myself just sitting here playing. And I got out of it and I was tired because I had a headset on for 45 minutes, but I didn't feel sick at all. Yeah, and I think part of the reason for that is the movements you do are so what you expect to happen. So when you throw your arms back and you sort of leap forward, it's, it feels like the movement you would get if you were in a low gravity environment. And yes. The same if you throw your arms the other way, you're jumping backwards. And there's never a point where you feel really disconnected with the movements that are happening on screen. Whereas you say with Skyrim, when you're doing this walking motion thing, it feels disconnected because that doesn't, you don't feel like doing that. I wasn't that even walking, thing. I was just sliding forwards. Yeah. I did the walking in LA Noir and that wasn't as bad. But yeah, it's great that that game with such a speed and such a fluid movement works in VR and does, made none of us, we all no. played it, none of us sick. So these two games, they're both great, actually, <laughs> uh, which is a bit of a cop out, isn't it? They're it both is. brilliant. Uh, if I, you want to. I've got a favourite though. You've got a favourite. Yeah. What's your favourite? Uh, I think to the top. The Climb for me is a really good game, and you are right, they are both great games. And if you've got unlimited money, yeah. get them both. But if you want something that I really just, I, I want to go back into to the top, I want to get better scores. I feel like it has a lot more replayability. Yes. Because you've got the whole, I, I agree, yeah. the whole challenge of it. And I can put the headset on you and say, hey, beat my score. Yes, you can um, do times in Climb. But to me, Climb feels a bit like, um, say Forza. It, mm. it, it tries to simulate a real world experience and you can beat people's times and you can drive the car around the track. Uh, whereas something like To The Top is more like Mario Kart mm. uh, in the sense of like it's, it's taking a real world thing and making it more video gamey and more fun. And yeah, I agree with you. I think To The Top, it's about 13, 12, 13 pounds cheaper in England. Yeah. And it, I think it just has a ton more content. At the end of the day, the climb is about going up to the top as quickly as you can. Uh, to The Top, has different modes, different levels, different ways of playing within its environment that make it 
much more replayable and much more sort of fun to play against each other, I think. And uh, I think we disagree on this, but I like the music. Into the, the music is strange. It's like this weird, mellow R&B music. I think it has which, like a Jet Set Radio feel to it. I, it kind of does. It kind of has a Jet Set Radio feel to it, but it doesn't feel to me like energetic enough. You're flying through this level and it's like, yeah, you're doing great. It's just, no, 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 it didn't, it didn't. Well, I'm playing Beat Saber right now, which is a oh, VR right. matching game, and that's got some pretty heavy music in it, and it feels right for the game. But I, it, didn't, it didn't turn me off. It, right. was, it was still nice music, nice effects. The graphics, although nothing like the visual fidelity of Climb. Yeah. There just, we go then. We go. So uh, I think we would say out of the two, to the top. But uh, To the top. If you've got loads of money, get them both. Or if you're a serious <laughs> climbing man that wants to climb a serious cliff and doesn't want all those colours and nonsense going on around you. So, thanks for watching, guys. We have got a lot more content coming up. We've got, uh, you're doing some VR reviews. I think Rebecca's going to be looking at some uh, PSVR titles. Yes. We've got lots, lots to cover. Um, I'm going to say, no, you can say the YouTube crap because it okay. feels... Can you good. please uh, like this video if you did like it? Comment if you have any other climbing games, big movement games that we can look at in the future. And subscribe for more content. Thank you very much. Goodbye.